Well, good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. Special welcome to any visitors, newcomers, guests that we have in our midst this morning. It is our great delight to have you with us. So if you are here for the first time or, or for one of, the, one of your first few visits, I want to I say something to you. If by the time we get to the peace, so I want you to try us out, check us out. If by the time we get to the peace, which is about halfway through the service, you're thinking to yourself, I might come back here. These people are relatively friendly. There is love in this place. I if, you, if you're feeling that way about halfway through the service, I would invite you to do something. Take out a Connect card, which is in the pew back in front of you. Every one of you has one in front of you. Take out a Connect card at that point. Not asking you to do it right now. Fill it out and put it in the plate that when it comes around. And that will enable us to do that which we love to do most, which is take time to connect with you that we might discover together how God is calling you further into the fellowship of this church. Where all are welcome, and as we say, Love is all. Oh, look, there you go. We have a special treat. In addition to any visitors we have with us today as our special treat, we have another special treat. We have a string quartet. Amadeus Lex is the name they go by, and they will be gracing us with song this morning. We will begin worship singing. Please stand as you're able. Turn to him 569. <laughs>
service continues on page 355 in your books of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, any children in our midst who wish to go to Children's Chapel can come forward to the chancel steps here, meet Miss Patty. All right. <laughs> That's right. Congregation, I'm going to pray for the children. I think you should pray for Miss Patty. She's up to it, but, um, yeah, wow, y'all are growing, the church is growing, the two go hand in hand. Let's have a prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you've blessed us with the joy and care of this great crowd of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See you soon. A reading from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a contro controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. 
and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. God. We will all read the psalm. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. Who speaks the truth from his heart, there is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the word to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Jesus Christ who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, at, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Jesus might just as well have said, blessed are the ordinary humans, the ones who need God and know it. He might just as well have said, blessed are all the ones who are struggling with hunger of any kind. Blessed are all the ones who are struggling with anger of all sorts. Blessed are the ones, he might well have said, blessed are the ones who are sick or sad or greedy or prideful or really buried in resentment. He might well have said, blessed are the ones who want to do better and can't. Blessed are the ones who need God and know it. Jesus might well have said, I came looking for humans, not heroes. Are there any human beings in the room this morning? Huh? George Van Meter, my brother. <laughs> A bunch of the rest of you. To be fully human is our aspiration as Christians. Y'all know what to be fully human means? To be fully human is to be loving with no thought of reward. What? If I'm loving, I want to be rewarded. To be fully human in the way of Jesus the Christ is to be loving with no thought of reward. That is what it means to love like Jesus. So the fully human, hmm, the fully human creature is a very peculiar creature indeed. She is one who will say things like this. Hmm? I love you and I don't care what you think about me. And she'll smile when she says it. She'll follow by saying, it's none of my business what you think about me. I love you. And she can say that and mean it. Because for her, huh, the fully human Christian, there is no quid pro quo. There is no thought of reward. There is only self-emptying love after the way of Jesus. No one owes this woman, the fully human Christian, anything. Do you know why? Because, baby, she's getting everything she needs from God. You see, love is all for her, the fully human Christian. Truly, she is... No hero. 
but a fully human child of God. Loving with no thought. It doesn't even cross her mind. No thought of reward. I can only describe this. I am not there. But I'll tell you about somebody who this side of paradise was on the path. My father, my father had many faults, many faults. Are there any human beings in the room? I also have many faults. My dad had many faults. He also had a great many gifts. And his greatest gift, I think, was his utter humanness. My father was not an intellectually gifted man. He was, he said this publicly many times, not a strong reader at all. He barely made it through school. When he was in his early 20s, struggling to make it through college, he sensed a call to the priesthood. But he thought, I'll never be a priest because I can barely read. How would I make it through seminary? He woke up in the middle of one dark night in a dorm room in Athens, Georgia. With this heavy sadness upon him, I'm called to be a priest, but how can one who cannot read be a priest, study in the seminary? And a whispering voice rose up from within his own body, he said, and rang in his ears. If you will go, I will get you through it. My father always understood that to be the very voice of God. And an invitation to step into his full humanity and go. And indeed he did go. He never did know much about art or music or literature. He couldn't spell the word philosophy. If he were here, he would tell you all of that with a great smile. Trust me, he would. And he would also tell you that for him, life was simply about loving people and pickup trucks, but mainly people. <laughs> he was a priest, my dad, and he loved all kinds of people. You're thinking, all kinds, all kinds. You ever been to that party where there's that guy standing out on the edge that no one will talk to because of what he said or done, or maybe he got drunk at the last one and threw up on the front? Who knows what it was? It's the guy we're all avoiding. Well, I promise you, if you're with the party with my father, when he was alive, God rest his soul, he would be at some point during the night over talking to that guy. All the rest of us are avoiding him. I guarantee you, my dad's talking to him and not in a token sort of gesture of kindness because the, isn't the priest supposed to go out to the margins? No, my dad's over there talking to this guy. He's animated, he's engaged, his hands are everywhere. And afterwards, my dad will say of this guy, Happens thousands of times in my lifetime. Afterwards, my dad will say of this guy, Frank, did you all talk to Frank? Heck of a guy. Frank and I are good friends. And we'd say to him, Dad, like, do you know Frank? Like, everyone, do you know why everyone's avoiding Frank? Like, no, we didn't talk to Frank. Do you know him, Dad? No, just met him tonight. So yeah, I do know him. We're actually, we're actually really good friends. He's one of my best friends. He's dead serious. My dad would say, Henry, have you ever talked to Frank? I'd say, no, Dad, everyone's avoiding Frank. And he'd say, well, you ought to slow down, buddy. He'd say, son, you ought to slow down. You ought to get to know him. I'm serious. He's one of my best friends. See, my dad just, he adored. He got in deep. With ordinary human beings, he took the time. This is why I say he was on the path to being fully human. Because he took the time to connect with, I guess, with everybody. And as a testimony to this fact of my father's life, his love of people, 800 of his best friends came to my father's funeral. That's a real number, 800. And they really did all say, he was my best friend. I've told this story before. In the space of the service, my father's funeral service, that was appropriate for sharing stories. An elegantly appointed, well-to-do, middle-aged woman stood up in the middle of that huge crowd at my father's funeral, and she said this. 
Father Harrison changed my life. We all leaned in close. What's coming next? She said, he changed my life with something he told us to do nearly 20 years ago. He told us that we should all take our shopping carts back to the store after we loaded our groceries in our cars. He said, don't leave the cart out in the parking lot for somebody else to go get. He told us, this woman said at his funeral, he told us that we're Christians and we ought to act like it. That is, act like we care about the workers at the store and take a little time. Take a little time and give them a hand by taking your cart back to the store. Father Harrison, this woman said, take it all the way back inside. And then he said, and don't tell anyone about it. I've, I've told that story before. And so I wondered when it came to my mind this week, when I was wrestling with the Beatitudes, I thought, why is that coming back to my mind? Like, what's the power in that story as a, as a metaphor, as a bearer of the gospel? And I thought of my father's line, take the time. And one of the things that happens when we take the grocery cart back is we slow down. We take the time. Why don't we take the grocery cart back? Because we don't want to take the time. But when we take it back, we end up taking the time. It takes time. And guess what, Christian friends? Transforming the world with love takes what? Time. So take any issue, don't be mad at me, okay? Forget, like, forgive me if you get upset with me. You ready? Y'all ready? Take any issue that fuels the culture wars today, in your own mind. Take any issue. I'll, I'll list just a few. Abortion, policing, transgender athletes, balance of power, health care, social security, a border, like any issue, take any issue. What's not helping, huh, on any issue is the rapid fire, here I stand, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong, I'm right, no time to discuss, move on. That ain't going well. That's like leaving the cart in the middle of the parking lot. Or worse, do you ever run into this? Some, like leaving it in the parking space. I go to a grocery store where there's not many parts. It's like, who left the cart in the middle of the parking space? We cannot get anywhere with this. If you march into my life and tell me, darn it, this is where I stand, and then you march out, we had no time. The cart is in the middle of the space. We did not listen to each other. We did not tease out any of the subtleties, nuances. We did not love each other in that moment. What helps? Huh? What helps? Slowing down. Taking time. Teasing apart the particulars. Listening to each other. Assuming that our neighbor has come to his view in good faith. That's holy ground. When Eric and I talk, I know he's come to his view in good faith. I believe. Is this true? I believe he thinks I've come to my view in good faith. We ought to take our, next time we talk, Eric, let's take our shoes off. Holy ground. Get curious. My dad said, son, have you ever talked to Frank? No, dad, no one talks to Frank. You ought to take time, he said. You ought to take time. What if the grocery store parking lot, there's a new difficulty? These darn Christians, oh my God, 
They are clogging the parking lot. All they do is walk around with their grocery carts. They're taking the time to walk their grocery carts to the store. They're talking to each other. They're li- Sometimes they stop in the middle of the parking lot and their hands are like this and then they hug at the end. We can't get into the parking lot for the Christians taking the time to care for one another and all the employees at the store. Y'all, Jesus is not looking for heroes. Come on. Jesus is looking for human beings. And I want to be. I can see it in your eyes. I can feel the energy coming back to me right now from this crowd. You want to be as well one of Jesus' ordinary human beings. I want to be fully human. Do you want to be fully human? One who loves without any expectation of return. Remember, to be fully human in the Christian tradition is to care about people and their peacefulness and to work to make life better for everyone without any need for approval or acclaim or credit or reciprocation or for the win. Stop going for the win, says our Lord Jesus, and go for love. He might well have said, Blessed are the ones who do simple, respectful, loving things because it's darn joyful to live that way. Blessed are the humans who take time, who take time to love and listen and love some more. Those Fully human ones are the heroes. Amen. Let us rise together as we affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father. The prayers of the people begin on page 387. It is form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. 
that our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Kathleen, Mary Jo, and Tyree, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Prayer of confession is found on page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of God. All right, you may be seated. Again, welcome and good morning. Special welcome to any guests that we have in our midst, whether you're joining us online or in the room. As I said, there's a Connect card in the pew back in front of you. So if so far you're like, I might come back, fill that Connect card out, put it in the plate, and that'll allow us to connect with you. If you're thinking, I'm not coming back to this church, I want you to fill it out anyway. I'm gonna give it to Father John. He loves the challenge. He will try to talk you into coming back to this church. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Couple other things to draw your attention to. Lots of marvelous formation opportunities at Good Shepherd Church. They're all listed. Emory's done a great job of listing all the formation opportunities, that's Bible study, Sunday school, these sorts of things for all ages, in the back of your bulletin. Also towards the back of your bulletin, you'll notice a picture of my new friends, close friends. I want you to know the Sparks, Laura and Sam Sparks. Raise your hands, Sparks. If you don't know our new best friends, they're right here, just joined the church. We're delighted you're here. Laura and Sam pictured prominently in the bulletin. I also want to draw your attention to an opportunity to help adorn this worship space for worship on Sunday mornings by providing flowers. Y'all see the beautiful flowers up there behind the altar. If you look in the back, towards the back of your bulletin, you'll see a nice little paragraph Emory has given us on altar flowers. And it describes an opportunity that some of you may not know about. 
It's an opportunity to, to give money, give a donation that then goes to the provision of these flowers for Sunday morning. Most people give them an honor, memory, or thanksgiving of someone they love. Or as I always say for Christians, maybe it's someone you don't love, but you want to love. <laughs> give flowers in their, in, their, uh, in their honor. What you may not know is that the flower ministry doesn't stop in just the worship service. After the 10 a.m. service, every Sunday, a team of pastoral care ministers takes those flowers into the flower room, breaks them up into separate bouquets, is that right, bouquets? And then they go out to people who are homebound, whether they're sick or sorrowful or, or celebrating the birth of a new baby or something like that, just married. Does that make sense? So if you give flowers, it helps worship, but it also goes beyond worship out into the community, so you're a pastoral care provider for that day. That's probably the best, that may be the best value in Lexington. You, for a hundred dollars, like what? You can, yeah, send love to this space and beyond this space. I happen to know that all of February is available. So you can sign up to provide flowers for February and then beyond an Easter season. Emory's provided the name of Grace Mulder, her email address. You're welcome one time only to take your phone out and email her right now and tell her what day you want. If a bunch of you sign up for the same day, we'll work that out. Any Christians in the room? Good. Loving with no expectation that everything will go my way. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is that it is our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving upon anyone who is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. There we go. While they're coming forward, I'll tell you that there's a concert in this space given by Dr. Middleton on February 4th at 7 p.m. I'll also note that Amadeus Lex is here and we are excited about y'all's presence. And you are here, Virginia Adair, and all you've brought all your friends with you. I'm so happy. So we've got anniversaries and birthdays, it looks like. Yep. Birthday, Virginia Adair is excellent. So congregation, you have the birthday prayer in the back of your prayer books. We'll pray it together saying, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, here are your sons and your beloved daughters gathered in this, your church, celebrating the anniversaries of their births and their weddings. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Indeed. All right. Final announcement of the day. You all know the Nordine family, right? You all know the Nordine family? Look at them. They are about to bring gifts to the table. They're new in our midst, too. Welcome the Nordines. They're about to bring gifts to our table. Give me one second. Not quite yet. They're about to bring gifts to our table. And the most important announcement we ever make is that the gifts that they are bringing to, their, to our table are for everybody in this room because everybody is welcome at this table. It is your table. Come to your table. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
you'll note that among the gifts brought to the table are an overwhelming outpouring of support, supplies for the well of Lexington. The service continues on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, life is gift and life is short. Well, you see, we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the road with us. So may we be swift to love and may we make haste to be kind. And indeed, may the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.